Good morning, Kiana. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. Blessings. Good morning. Blessings. Pray that each one of you had a wonderful night of rest. If you have any prayer requests, let us know. Any praise reports, let us know. How many of you know there's something about that name? There's, there's something about that name. So I want you to listen to it. That's the Lord blessings at this time. Yes. Good morning, Lois. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. Yes. Good morning, the author. Bless you, man of God. Oh, God, we thank you. If you have any prayer requests or praise reports, let me know. Any prayer requests or praise reports, let me know. Oh, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody help me say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no other name given. There's no other name given. Good morning, Sonia. Blessings to you and your family. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Supernatural. My God. Father, we love you. Father, we honor you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. My God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for traveling mercies for those who are traveling to work, those who are going to school, those who are going to college. We thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you that they will have a productive day. They will have a fruitful day. Good morning, James. Bless you. Good to have you this morning. We're praying. We're covering you. Thanking God that you're going to finish strong. You're going to finish strong. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. Know that the favor of God is upon you. Know that the hand of God is upon you. Know that the wisdom of God is upon you. 
and he will direct your steps. Blessings to you. All right. Yes. Can we thank God for James? This is his last semester. Uh, he's been working hard and very diligent, and he has kept focus. And so we thank God for his last semester that he will excel in academics this last semester, and he will finish strong. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. Awesome. We're excited for you. All right. Any prayer requests or praise reports? Any prayer requests or praise reports? We want to thank God once again for uh, Tina Bryant, who uh, God just blessed her and her children with a home. Uh, she set up a registry for those of you who want to be a blessing. Uh, pray, pray for my baby who will be here soon. Doctors found something in the left part of her heart. Father, we thank you for Kiana's baby, and we pray that you would touch her right now. Father, we speak healing, wholeness, and health. In the name of Jesus, confound the doctors. We trust you. We look to you. Our expectation is in you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So those of you who want to be a blessing to Tina, you go to Walmart, to the registry, and you can put in her name, I believe, Tina Bryant, and registry, and you can be a blessing to her. All right. Let's go this morning. Let's start off by putting there... 58 slash uncommon seed, 58 slash uncommon seed. Every month we stand together with the $58 seed and we'll sow an uncommon seed uh, when the Lord provides it, either at the end of the year, which just passed, or at the beginning, however the Lord provided for you. 58 slash uncommon seed, 58 slash uncommon seed. After you have done that, please, ma'am, please, sir, write this down. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. Thank you, Lois. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good. Excellent. I want you to meditate on uh, 1 Samuel 12, 16. I gave you that scripture yesterday. 1 Samuel 12 and 16. Now, therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. I decree and declare that God shall do a great thing right before your eyes. Thank you. Love you. Love My you. wife is off. We cover her in prayer. First Samuel twelve sixteen. Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. I decree and declare that you shall experience a great thing in the coming days, the coming weeks, the coming months, for the glory of God. Hallelujah. All right. Let's go this morning. Let's go back to Ephesians. Let's go back to Ephesians. Let's see if you remember uh, what we talked about in the book of Ephesians. Let's go back there, Ephesians, and let's do a little review, okay? Let's go back to Ephesians, and let me give you a breakdown of each chapter. Ephesians chapter 1 is the privilege of the believer. Write that down. Ephesians chapter 1 is the privilege of the believer. Ephesians chapter 1 is the privilege of the believer. Ephesians chapter 1 is the privilege of the believer. Ephesians chapter 2 
is the pardon of the believer. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 1 is the privilege of the believer. Ephesians chapter 2 is the pardon of the believer. Okay, so in Ephesians 1, God shows you the privileges as a believer. Ephesians chapter 2, the pardon, P-A-R-D-O-N, the pardon of the believer. Ephesians 3 is the power of the believer. Ephesians 4 is is the practice of the believer. Ephesians 5 is the purity of the believer. Ephesians 6 is the persistence of the believer. Okay? One more time. Ephesians chapter 1, the privilege of the believer. You have been chosen by God. You have been blessed by God. You have been redeemed by God. You have been predestined. You have been sealed by his Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, that's the privilege of the believer. Ephesians chapter 2, the pardon of the believer. Ephesians chapter 3, the power of the believer. Ephesians chapter 4, the practice of the believer. Ephesians chapter 5, the purity of the believer. Ephesians chapter 6, the persistence of the believer. Good morning, Valerie, Willie, Tempest, Tina, Timber, blessings. Okay. I just give it a little review. Okay. Excuse me for a second. I just want to make sure my wife gets out safely. Something. All right. Blessings, blessings to everyone. All right. Blessings. God bless you, Wendy. Blessings to you. Thank God for your safe travel. Thank God for your safe travel back. God bless you, Felicia. Pray that you had a wonderful time on your trip. Blessings to you, Felicia. God bless you, Kadia. All right. Great time. Awesome. 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 All right. Those of you coming on, make sure you put down there, I have an appointment with Breakthrough. Traveling mercies to you. All right. So the breakdown of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 is the privilege of the believer Ephesians chapter 2 is the pardon of the believer. Ephesians chapter 3 is the power of the believer. Ephesians chapter 4 is the practice of the believer. Ephesians chapter 5 is the purity of the believer. And Ephesians chapter 6 is the persistence of the believer. Let's go to... Ephesians chapter number one. Okay. We talked about some of the privileges of the believer. Let's go back over it because these are things that uh, you should be excited over. Okay. Ephesians chapter one. Okay. Ephesians chapter one, verse number three. You have been blessed by God. Write that down. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. You have been blessed by God. That word blessed means to empower, 
to prosper. Okay, verse number three tells you, you have been blessed by God. Past tense. You're not going to be blessed. You're already blessed. You're not going to be blessed when you get the house. You're already blessed. You're not going to be blessed when you get a car. You've already blessed. You're not going to be blessed when you get things. You are already blessed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath, who hath, who hath. That's past tense. Not who will, not who did, who hath blessed us, past tense. Not who will, or, okay? He has already done it, okay? That's verse number three. Ephesians 1 and 3, you've been blessed. Ephesians 1 and 4, you have been chosen by God. Ephesians 1 and 4, you have been chosen by God. So it's not enough that he bless you. Now he's chosen you before the foundations of the world. Therefore, you are not an afterthought. You are a beforethought. Verse number five, you have been predestined. Verse number five, you have been adopted. Okay, so verse number three, you've been blessed by God. Verse number four, you have been chosen by God. Verse number five, you have been predestined. Verse number five, you've been adopted. Not only do you have his nature, you have his name. Through regeneration, you get his nature. Through adoption, you get his name. He's put his name on you. That means you are an heir of God. You are a joint heir of Christ. Okay. Verse number three, you've been blessed by God. Verse number four, you've been chosen by God. Verse number five, you've been predestined. Verse number five, you've been adopted. Verse number seven, you've been redeemed through his blood. Verse seven, you've been redeemed through his blood. Verse number seven, you have the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number 11. You have an inheritance. Verse 11, you have an inheritance. Verse 13, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? Now watch this, watch this, right where you are, put your hands up in the air, or just put your hand on the screen. I want to pray this prayer over you, I want to pray this prayer over you, okay, verse number 17, I want to pray this prayer over you, okay, put your hand up in agreement, or put your hand on the screen. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of him. Come on, agree with that, receive that. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, Kadia, I pray that God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Felicia, I pray that God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray thou that God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray, Wendy, that God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Lois, I pray that God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The author, Kadia, Evangelist Bryant, Evangelist Ellis, James, Sue, Terrell, Tony. I pray that God give us all the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 
Secondly, I pray, Lois, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody write that down. The eyes of my understanding shall be enlightened. Come on, declare that this morning. The eyes of my understanding shall be enlightened. My God, that's good. The eyes of my understanding shall be enlightened. The eyes of my understanding shall be enlightened. Okay? So not only do you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Okay? I want you to declare that. Declare that over your life. I have the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I have the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of him. Michael, Kylie, and Caitlin uh, are listening. Blessings. Good morning, Mike, Mike. Good morning, Kylie. Good morning, Kaylee. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Blessings to you all. The hand of the God rest upon you. You will grow up to be favored by God. You will be taught of the Lord. Okay? So number one, I want you to declare this over your life every day. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Number two, the eyes of my understanding are enlightened. My God. Okay. Number three, I pray that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Let's break it down real slow. I pray for you, Lois, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him be upon you. Number two, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Number three, I pray that you may know the hope of his calling. Number four, what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in you. My God, that's a powerful prayer. Okay. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, Val. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling, that the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. Next, that you may know, Kadir, what is the exceeding greatness of his power. Blessings to you. Blessings to you, Juan. Blessings to you and your family. Let's welcome Juan this morning. First time. Let's welcome Juan this morning. First time with us. I pray each one of you, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward you to believe according to the working of his mighty power? Wendy, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be open. Kadir, I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray, the author, that you know the hope of his calling. I pray, Val, that you realize the exceeding greatness of his power. Hallelujah. Watch this. Go down with me to verse 20. Verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Okay? Write this down. Christ is seated at the right hand in heavenly places. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. 
which he has wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Watch this. Far above all principalities, power, might, dominion, every name that is named. Good. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet. Write this down. All things are under his feet. Come on. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And all things are under his feet. Write that down. All things are under his feet. That means he has authority. He has dominion over all things. All things are under his feet. Good morning, Tony. Blessings to you. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Okay. Blessing. We're in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 20. Ephesians 1 and 20. Okay. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Everything is under his feet. He is the head of the church. So Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Everything has been put under his feet, and he is the head of the church. I want you to write those three things down. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. All things have been put under his feet. And he is the head of the church. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. All things are under his feet. And he is the head of the church. Okay. All right. If you're receiving this morning, tap that screen. Let me see some hearts. Let me see some hearts. Good, good. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. All things are under his feet. And he is the head of the church. I want to see if you caught that. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Thank you, dear Arthur. All things are under his feet. And he is the head of the church. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. All things are under his feet. He is the head of the church. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. All things are under his feet. He is the head of the church. Good. Christ Sonia is seated at the right hand of the Father. All things are under his feet, and he is the head of the church. Can we praise God for that? Can we praise God that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father? All things are under his feet, and he is the head of the church. Can we praise God for that? That Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. In heavenly places. All things are under his feet. He is the head of the church. Did you catch it, Wendy? My God. Put that in capital letters. All things are under his feet. Write that down. All things are under his feet. All things are under his feet. All things are under his feet. Put that in capital letters. All things are under his feet. Hallelujah. That means he has authority over all things. He has power over all things. All things are under his feet. 
He has power over all things. He has dominion over all things. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. All things are under his feet. And he is the head of the church. Okay? I want you to remember that. I'm going to ask you two questions. I'm going to ask you two questions. And your answer, make sure you put your answer in capital letters. Okay? I'm going to ask you two questions. Make sure you put your answer in capital letters. Number one, who is the head of the church? Number one, who is the head of the church? Who is the head of the church? Okay. Good. Thank you, Tony. Good. Good. Make sure you put it in capital letters. Who is the head of the church? Christ. Good. 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 We just read that. He is the head of the church. Good. Good. Number two, who is the body of Christ? Who is the body of Christ? Who is the body of Christ? Okay. Who is the body of Christ? Us. Good. 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 We are. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Christ is the head of the church. We are the body of Christ. Good. Okay, good. Your feet is connected to the body. Watch this. Your feet are connected to the body. If Christ is the head, we are the body. And God has put everything under his feet. That means not only is it under his feet, it's under you. Because you are the body. We are the body. And not only does Christ have power over it, not only does Christ have authority over it, you have authority over it. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are his body. He is the head. And if it's under his feet, Lois, it's under your feet. If it's under his feet, Wendy, it's under your feet. If it's under his feet, Sonia, it's under your feet. If it's under his feet, Val, it's under your feet. Because you are the body. Hallelujah. I want you to see that. See, you can see that Christ has authority over it, that Christ has dominion over it, but it's telling you he's the head. You are the body and everything is under his feet. And if it's under his feet, the author, it's under your feet. Everything that you're going through, you have power over it. Everything that you're going through, Kiana, you have dominion over it. My God, can you praise God that you have power over your situation? You have dominion over your situation. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. Hallelujah. I kept saying it on purpose so you could see that if it's under his feet, it's under your feet. If it's under his feet, it's under your feet. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Ephesians 2 and 1. Okay. We talked about the privilege of the believer. Let's talk about the pardon of the believer. Chapter 2 deals with the pardon of the believer. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you're receiving this morning, if you're glad about the privileges as a believer, come on, tap that screen. If you're glad, yes, Lord, that you have dominion and authority, if you're glad to be the body of Christ, come on, tap that screen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Yes, good. Write the word down, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus deals with humanity. Christ deals with the anointing. Write that down. Jesus Christ. 
Jesus deals with humanity. Christ deals with anointing. Jesus deals with humanity. Christ deals with anointing. Thank you, Kiana. Jesus deals with humanity. Christ deals with the anointing. Okay. When you see the word Christ, it means the anointed one and his anointing. Okay. You see the word Jesus, it deals with his humanity. Okay. Jesus deals with humanity. Christ deals, thank you, Sonia, thank you, Lois, with the anointing. So when you say Jesus Christ, thou, you are saying a man operating under the anointing. Okay? When you say Jesus Christ, it's a man operating in the anointing. When you say Christ Jesus, it's the anointing operating through a man. Okay, you got that? Hallelujah. Okay, good. Jesus deals with humanity. Okay, Jesus deals with humanity. Christ deals with the anointing. Jesus, humanity. Jesus, humanity, the body. Christ, anointing, the spirit. Let me say it again. Jesus, humanity, the body, Christ, the anointing, the spirit. Okay, let me ask you another question. Let me ask you another question. Who died on the cross? 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 Jesus Christ. Who died? Jesus or Christ? Who died or did both of them die? Who died on the cross? Put it in capital letters. Jesus Christ. Jesus is humanity, the body. Christ is the anointing, the spirit. Okay? I want you to see something. Jesus is humanity. Good. Christ is the anointing. Good. Good, Kiana. Good, Wendy. Jesus died on the cross. Okay? Good. What happened to Christ? What happened to Christ? If Jesus died, what happened to Christ? If Jesus died on the cross, Lois, what happened to Christ? See, as long as Jesus was here, the anointing operated in him, on him, through him. And when he died, now Christ got on another body. That's us. That's why we are called the body of Christ. Because the spirit that operated in and through Jesus now lives in us, now operates in us. You see that? So Jesus died, humanity, but now just like Christ used Jesus, he wants to use you and I. Hallelujah. He didn't operate as God. He operated through the Spirit of God. Okay? So I want you to see that. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Okay? All right. Let's talk about the pardon of the believer, okay? The word pardon means the action of forgiving or being forgiven for an offense, okay? Some people use the word clemency. Some people use the word forgiveness. Some people use the word uh, mercy, okay? He obtained a pardon for his sins, okay? So, in order to be pardoned, you had to be guilty. Okay? So, a person was already sentenced for an offense, and then someone greater than them, or someone in power and authority, pardoned them. Okay? So, we were all guilty, but Jesus pardoned us. 
through his death, he pardoned us. He set us free. He had mercy on us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So it took him dying on the cross for you and I to be pardoned. Can we thank him for pardoning us? Can we thank him that we were guilty and yet he gave us a pardon, yet he had mercy on us, yet he forgave us? He gave us the gift of forgiveness. So we have forgiveness through his blood. Hallelujah. We have forgiveness through his blood. Let's look at this. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And then I'm going to close out. I'll read a couple of scriptures and then we'll finish it tomorrow. Ephesians 2 and 1. How many of you receiving this morning? How many of you receiving something this morning? Are you receiving are you being enlightened? Are you being empowered? Are you excited about what was done for you, in you, through you? Are you glad to be the body of Christ? Are you glad to have a spirit of God dwelling in you? In the Old Testament, he came upon people and left, but now he dwells in you. He said, not only will I be with you, Kadia, but I will be in you. Always and forever. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. The word quickened means to be made alive. And you, that's us, hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So that means even though we were alive, we were dead yet while we were alive. And he quickened us. He made us alive. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Did you see that? Okay. Remember I told you before we came to Christ? Okay. Awesome. Before we came to Christ, we had an Adamic nature, a sin nature, and by nature, we were the children of wrath. But God, come on, verse number four, put that in capital letters. But God, two words, capital letters, but God, my God, we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were walking according to the world, the pattern. We had our conversation in the world. We were fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. We were fulfilling our desires. And we were natures, uh, natures, the nature of the children of wrath. We operated as children of disobedience. But then the scripture says, but God, hallelujah. Anybody glad for a but God? I was about to give up, but God. I was about to throw in the tower, but God. I was going down, but God. I was sick, but God. God, hallelujah, I was about to lose it all. But God showed up, stepped in, and right on time. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Hallelujah. Yes, I did all those things. Yes, I was guilty. But God, hallelujah. So you got to remember that. I was guilty, but God. When you see the word but, but is a conjunction. My God, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for traveling mercies for Wendy and her grandchildren. As they go off to school, we thank you for your hand being upon them. They will excel in all that they do. Thank you for keeping them safe. Thank you for a wonderful trip you gave her family in Jesus' name. 
Okay, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Hallelujah. Can you thank him for his love? Can you thank him for his love? And what I love about God is he doesn't have love. He is love. Somebody write that down. You need to know that. He doesn't have love. He is love. That is his nature, Val. His nature is love, Wendy. His nature is love, Sonia. His nature is love, Tony. He's not trying to love you. He can't help but love you because God is love. Love is not an emotion. It is his nature. It is his essential nature. But God, who is rich in mercy, with his great love, he loved us. God is love. What is love? It's not an emotion. It's not something you fall in and fall out of. It's not something that when you're doing good, he loves you. And then when you do bad, he doesn't love you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Because love is a commitment based on a decision. My God, I feel like running. I said love, Lois, is a commitment based on a decision. God made a decision and he's committed to it for eternity. My God, Val, God made a decision concerning you and he's committed to that decision. God made a decision concerning you, the author, and he's committed to that decision. God made a decision concerning you, Sonia, concerning you, Kadia, concerning you, Felicia, concerning you, Terrell, and he's committed to that decision, Sue. He's committed to that decision, Lisa. He's committed to that decision, Jennifer. He's committed to that decision, Tina. He's committed to the decision that he made concerning you. God bless you. Have a great day, Tony. Did you get the information? I know you said you wanted to be a blessing to the young lady. Did you get the information for the registry? All of you who have to go, I'm about to close myself. Make sure you get the information uh, for Tina Bryant. Put it in there at Walmart, the registry. I believe that's what it is. Her mother is on the line so she can let us know. Okay. Oh, okay. If you remember a while ago, God blessed a young lady with a home for her and her children. And many of you said you wanted to be a blessing to her. So she has set up a registry. Okay. She set up a registry for her home. Okay. And so we gave out the information because many of you said you wanted to be a blessing. We said we're going to be a blessing to her. Okay. So she set up a registry at Walmart, okay, so it's under Tina Bryant, so you just put her name in there, I believe that's how it works, I'm not too sure how uh, those things work, okay, but I believe you can go there, okay, uh, okay, so that's the information for the registry, all right, God bless you, let's stop there, let's stop there, Let's stop there. Verse number four. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Okay. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. We want to thank him for his grace. Before we get off, can you thank him for his grace? I am who I am by the grace of God. I would have never made it if it wasn't for his grace. Does anybody else have that testimony? I got this far by the grace of God. I would have never made it. Okay, I will see her address on this. Okay, good. Good. You know how it works. I, okay, good. Good. 
I believe uh, you can set up a registry, I believe, and then, good. Thank you for your grace. Yeah, yeah. His grace is sufficient. I don't know about you, but I've got myself in a lot of things, a lot of bad choices and decisions. And if it had not been for the grace of God, I don't know where I would be. And Lord, this morning, I want to thank you for your grace. I want to thank you for your mercy. I want to thank you for your loving kindness. I want to thank you for your long suffering. I want to thank you for your patience. I want to thank you for your great mercy toward us. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. I want to thank you that I am not consumed, my God, but great is thy faithfulness toward us. All right, as we close today, remember, do something to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, keep a joyful attitude. Don't let anything steal your joy. Number four, use your words to frame your world. Remember, you've been set up to win in life. Continue to pray for our evangelist, Bryant. Uh, my wife, Carol Bryant, she will be on CTN, Christian Television Network, goes all over the world. She will be on there next week on the 13th. By the grace of God, we're praying that this will open a great door for her all over the country. We pray that those who will watch it, those who will tune in, not only will they read her book, they will be touched by her life. They will be touched by her testimony. Not only that, but we're praying that it opens doors for her to go all over the speak. Father, we pray that this would be a strategic time that you will have her on there. Anoint her. Give her the words to say. We thank you that there will be no fear. There will be no uh, intimidation, but your boldness will be upon her and she will speak as a ready writer, and she will speak the oracles of God. We thank you that you have kept her for such a time as this. We thank you for the host in Jesus' name. Okay, good. So she'll be taping it next week. She'll be taping it next week, and then we'll tell you when it's going to air, and then we'll let you know uh, what station it'll be on. It'll be all over the country. Uh, but depending on your provider, uh, that'll let you know what channel we'll be on. All right, we love each one of you. Have a victorious day. Have a fruitful day. Have a productive day. We love each one of you. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Continue to pray one for another. Know that your steps have been ordered by God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and never beneath. Hallelujah. You have more than enough. I have more than enough. You are a master problem solver. You are debt free, walking in abundance. God shall do a great thing right before your eyes. God shall do a great thing right before your eyes. I speak first Samuel. 12:16 I speak 1 Samuel 12:16 Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes I speak that verse over you Wendy I speak that verse over you James I speak that verse over your family over your grandchildren my God Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. 1 Samuel 12, 16. Meditate on that. 1 Samuel 12, 16. Now therefore stand thou and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Be encouraged, each one of you. God loves you. We love you. We celebrate you. We honor you. Have a productive day.